Okay, so step one is to find a design. Um, and if you're an artist, you could create your own. But if you're like me, you find drawings on the internet. I found these by simply searching for martini glass with olive. And these are four that I liked, and I picked the the one in the uh, in the bottom bottom right corner there. Okay, step two is to now select some veneer, veneers that you're going to use. Um, and of course, you need a box of veneers. And a great way to get started is is this box that I bought. It's 50 square feet of different pieces of veneer that I got for only 36 dollars from veneersupplies.com and basically these are random cutoffs of a lot of different scrap pieces but they're great for marquetry probably at least 20 different varieties in this box and so then I went through and I picked some so this was curly um, walnut for the background um, then I picked this uh, this dark brown veneer which I'm not even sure what it is um, for the toothpick uh, and then some basswood for the glass um, I picked some cedar, um, cedar here for the gin, um, some curly anagray for the olive, and then finally some red dyed veneer um, for the olive pit. Okay, step three, we're going to create a tracing of the drawing. Um, and now here I'm simply going to use standard tracing paper with a, with a pencil and trace it. And we're going to use this this drawing for a variety of work that you'll see. And one thing I did here is that I simplified the drawing as I made a tracing. I didn't really like the toothpick design. The, the top of it was kind of funny. And so I just simplified it actually, which I liked better and it's actually easier to cut. Okay, step four. We're going to number the parts in the order of the cutting. So we have a drawing here of the martini glass and you can see I've actually found there's 14 parts um, and basically two rules when I decide on the order number one never cut out a part that contains other parts um, and number two try to cut in an order that um, you don't have to create a new starter hole for each part you want to be able to just continue from one part to the next no you know there's a lot of different ways this could be done you can see what I've done here I'm actually starting with that tiny olive pit down in the center of the drawing moving on to the olive above it number two and then I'm actually cutting along the bottom of four to get to the next olive pit three then I'm doing the olive above that four and on and on around and around okay the next step is to transfer the drawing that we've made to a piece of heavy um, cardstock um, otherwise known as chipboard and this will serve as the this will go on the top of the packet and that will be our guide for um, for doing the cutting um, you can see here I'm taping the tracing onto the uh, onto the the card stock which is below it and I'm going to trace that onto there um, now an alternative to tracing it like this is you can you can glue a drawing on I've just run into problems with that if it isn't glued really well as you start doing the cutting bits can start falling off and that causes problems so usually what I do is, is, is trace it on. Okay, and to trace it, I just use good old um, carbon paper. <clears throat> and something that really helps throughout most of the work we're doing here is you can see I have some magnifying goggles on, which I use a lot um, for various aspects. Okay, and now once you're done tracing, it's real important to double check to make sure you got it all because it's really easy to miss something in the tracing. One thing I normally do is, is go number by number to make sure that I, that I get them all. Okay, and then finally it's a real good idea to add a set of four cross hatches on the corner just in case you need to realign the drawing in the future that helps. Okay, now step six, we're going to assemble a packet of veneers that we're going to cut. And what we start with is a base layer of a thick um, chipboard or cardboard, a poster board. Um, this is 50 point cardboard that I'm using, which is, which is about as, is pretty thick. Um, it doesn't have to be quite that thick if you don't want. Um, and I'm going to first apply our, our tracing and that'll just help me make sure that I line up all the veneers, you know, so they're centered to get the picture right. Um, this is a fairly simple 
one that the drawing is not as critical because it's pretty straightforward what I'm doing but in general um, for more complicated ones particularly um, the drawing is really important and so we line it up with the drawing here and then we just start taping them in one after one and here I'm using a, a special tape you can buy it actually at Menards um, it's frog, frog tape delicate surface masking tape and what's special about this stuff is it has a pretty low adhesive strength compared to regular masking tape and so that's important to avoid damaging veneers because later on when we have to remove this tape you know too strong a tape it'll start it'll start ripping up fibers from the from the veneer um, the other thing I'm doing you can see that I'm laying down after I taped on the veneer I covered it with a with a complete layer of tape now that's an optional step and what that does is particularly for delicate veneers and particularly if you're cutting pretty small and particularly narrow parts or sharp points that really strengthens the veneer so that it won't break um, now here I'm actually doing it on all of them and I really don't recommend that I just did it um, just really do it on those ones that are that are pretty fragile now with fancier drawings I'd be paying a, a lot of attention to the grain direction of the different veneers I'm putting in but this is such a simple drawing that I'm really just putting some in horizontal and some vertical and you can see then I've, I've simply stacked all six different veneers on top of each other taped them in well and ready to move on to the next step okay now step seven the final step in creating the packet is to put that cardboard that we created previously that we put the drawing on remember we traced the drawing onto that and that's going to be the top of the packet again we want to make sure that's aligned and once we get that lined up with the drawing we just tape the whole packet um, closed with a bunch of tape um, now one thing I did here when I when I did in this drawing I forgot um, since I'm doing this video and I used the weak the weak yellow tape um, that I was using for the veneers really in this case it's best to use a stronger tape like regular blue masking tape or whatever you have it can be pretty strong because we're not taping veneer here we're taping the cardboard we really want this taped well um, to keep it closed and tight as you can see when all of the tape I'm putting on you really want to make sure it's on there good you don't want things shifting around in this case like I say I used the wrong tape but it still worked fine it just was peeling up a little bit as I went and I had to push it back down um, but it, it worked out fine one other thing to note here is that my top cardboard piece is smaller than the bottom the standard approach is actually to have them both be the same time and wrap the tape around the edge around to the back the reason I stopped doing that is once in a while the tape can start peeling up and it catches while you're cutting and can throw you off and so I have started doing it this way but either way can work okay step eight we're getting ready to cut but first thing is make sure your scroll saw blade is exactly perpendicular if it's not it you know things are going to be shifted some and it won't come together as well so spend a little bit of time and and really make sure it's as close to perpendicular as you can okay the next step then is getting ready to cut we're gonna drill a 1 32nd inch starter hole um, and to do that I'm using a little 1 32nd inch drill and something called a pin vise real simple little handheld tool and we place it on the first piece we're going to cut along the line someplace just choose a place along the line of the first piece and hold the drill perpendicular and and just drill it through and it's 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 surprisingly easy actually to to drill through this packet of veneers and cardboard it doesn't take long at all as you'll see here um, okay then after we've drilled the holes what I'm gonna do is ream the back side of the hole a little bit and I'm using just a little Dremel bit here it's a little reaming Dremel bit tool and just just wind it up a little bit which is gonna make it a little bit easier to get that blade entering that hole okay and now we're gonna feed the blade through that little hole we just created um, if you've planned out your cutting well you should really only have to do this once some designs you may have to do it a little more but generally you can get by with once and it's not too hard 
feed it through. It helps to have a light on the one side to kind of shine it through so you can see the hole. But you can see I've got it through there already. And we just put it on the blade and or put it on the saw and tighten her up. Okay, step 10 is the fun part. We start cutting out all of the pieces one by one. Um, <clears throat> and this first one I'm going to show you, I'm cutting it in real time just to give you a sense of how long it takes. And, you know, I'm not particularly good at a scroll saw yet. It does take a little bit of practice, so certainly before you would do this, if you've never used a scroll saw, you'd want to play around and get the hang of the scroll saw. Um, one thing that's important when you're cutting these parts out, it it's okay if you deviate a bit from the line because it'll still fit just fine since you're cutting the background and the piece at the same time. Um, and if you do deviate some, don't come right back. Just gently come back to the line and no one will ever know. Sometimes those mistakes actually look better. You end up liking the design a little bit better when you add this little squirrel in there that you didn't really plan on. The other thing you'll see, sometimes when I come to corners like right there, I will actually stop the blade. I have a little foot switch on the blade. I'll stop the blade and then spin it to go again. Um, I find that works well with these veneers. I'm told that that can actually break blades if you're using you know, big solid pieces of wood, but I've not had any issues here um, doing the veneer. And at least for me, works pretty well, especially for pretty tight, sometimes pretty tight turns. You're doing a sharp point that's you know, you're almost 180 degree, degree turn sometimes. So. And here it looks like I've finally finished cutting. So I release the blade and pull up and the pieces will fall out. You gotta be a little bit careful. There's a couple that are falling out there and there's some that are still hanging in the packet because we're getting six pieces here every time we cut since we put six veneers in. <clears throat> and then we have a little parts box and we'll collect each one of the parts in a little, in a little uh, divider area and we'll one by one, when we're all done, we'll, we'll have them all there. Um, it's important to have something like this to keep it or organized or you'll have a mess. Okay, now we're going to cut a few more pieces just to show you, and I've sped up the video here since we don't want to spend too much time here. Um, in this time here, I'm cutting one of the little olive pits. So this is a really tiny piece, um, which I do not recommend trying to cut uh, the first time. It's the, like one of the smallest pieces I've ever cut. It worked, but it, it's sort of a pain. Notice um, at times I have my fingers quite close to that blade when you're cutting. You really want to hold down the veneer tight. And so I'm getting them really close to the blade at times. But you don't have to worry too much. These blades are so fine you're not going to get a serious cut if you ever hit it. I've never hit it, but I'm told it's like a paper cut if you do. So, But it is important to be able to hold down the piece near where you're cutting to keep the veneer and things from flopping around. The total cutting time here when I did the whole pack was, was about an hour, probably less, but something like that. It doesn't really take all that long to do the cutting. Okay, now we're all done cutting and we're going to disassemble the packet to recover the background veneers. And there's six of those background veneers now. And it's really just a matter of removing a, a lot of tape. Um, the one thing when you get to the veneers is you want to be a little bit careful removing the tape. In general, it's a good idea to pull the tape across the grain rather than with the grain. It really varies. I mean, a lot of veneers, it's no big deal. Some veneers are pretty delicate and you just got to be a bit careful to not be yanking the tape too, too quickly. You'll get the hang of it after you do it a while. And so it's just one by one, pull them all out. Um, and this gives us again the opportunity. We can create six different coasters up to that many if we want to. We're going to only be making four here. Finally, on this one, you'll see I'm actually doing a little mending of the veneer. Um, it's not uncommon to get little tears, no big deal, but you want to put a piece of tape on it to get, keep the veneer from getting a little longer, or keep the tear from getting longer. Okay, we're now going to get ready to assemble the picture. 
And the first step is to put some tape on the veneer, which is going to hold the pieces in place. Now, as we were doing the cutting, we were always looking from at the show side of the veneer, okay? When we assemble, we're gonna actually flip the veneer over and be re working from the reverse side. So we'll be looking at a reverse image. So what I'm gonna do is put tape across that window in the veneer, but it's gonna be, the tape's gonna be on the show side. Okay, this is the show side we're looking at here. And after I have the tape on there, I'm gonna flip it over and then we're looking at the glue side, which will be a reverse image. And so when you're doing this work, it's really helpful to have a reverse image of your picture printed out because it gets confusing if you don't have that reverse image in terms of you know where does each part go. So that, that's pretty important. But here you have finished putting the tape on and we're gonna flip it over and then we will insert the pieces from that direction. Okay, the next step, we're gonna assemble the picture by placing all the little various cutout pieces into that background veneer. Um, there's some, you gotta give a little bit of thought as to how to do this. You don't put them in the order you cut them. Instead, you try to place the ones that are obvious where they go. For example, that bottom piece, it can only fit one place. And so you're gonna put that in first. And then you're gonna to move to some of the other corners where there's really only one place the piece can fit. So for example, I'm taking this upper corner now and I'm putting that into place. Um, one thing at this point, do not press them in hard, just set them in gently. We, want, we won't press them in against that tape hard until we're all done. Another thing, make sure that the pieces, they can have a little bit of sawdust on them from the cutting. Uh, make sure you've, you've kind of cleaned them off just with your fingers, just wipe off any sawdust because that can affect their ability to stick to the tape. And we just go one by one. Um, Some of the pieces get kind of hard to move around. They're so small, sometimes I, I'll use my little forceps here. What I've done is stabbed the little piece and moved it with the forceps that way. And this is okay, we're not gonna hurt it because we're working from the glue side. So if I put little cut marks into that veneer, that's gonna be on the bottom side that will never be seen. So you don't have to worry about that. And we just slowly build a picture then. And again, it can be a little tricky moving some of these little pieces, especially the really little ones, but you just take your time. And I'm often using magnifying lenses here too, just so I can see the alignment better. Don't have to. Okay, now we've got all the pieces in. The next step's important is you want to take look carefully with some magnifying goggles and carefully nudge the pieces. You want to get an even, there's this little gap, you know, one one hundredth inch gap around each piece. You want that to be kind of spread evenly around. Um, to It'll be less noticeable. Um, actually, this is a, you can tell this is a different picture here. I forgot to take the video the first time, but I'm using my forceps to kind of push the pieces ever so slightly. And this is why we didn't want that tape on tight. Now finally though, we're ready. We got it all moved. Now we want to really press the things into the tape to keep them from shipping around. And I typically use a little roller here and just roll it real good to get it good and tight. Okay, and now we need something to glue the veneer to. Um, MDF or plywood are the most commonly used, but in this case we're actually using um, solid wood. I'm using half inch uh, solid mahogany here because I'm going to want to expose that wood on the edges when we're done. Now, when we glue down, the tape needs to be pointed up. The tape is the show side, so make sure that's the way it's glued down with the tape up. And I've sized these to be about a half inch oversized because at the end we'll trim them down to size. Okay, now we're getting ready to think about gluing up, and I'm going to be showing you the use of a vacuum bag press. Now, this is not essential. Um, you can most certainly use um, clamps, but if you do a lot of this works, the vacuum bag is great. And so here is my vacuum bag, and I'm just putting it around a three-quarter inch piece of, of plywood that has some laminate on the top to keep things from sticking to it. Um, we put that in there, 
And then we put on top of that is what's called a breather cloth, which is basically heavy-duty fiberglass window screen. And that serves to allow the air out. It provides a flow path, and it also helps protect the bag um, as it's pulled down. Okay, next I'm going to talk a little bit about my favorite glue, Unibon 800. But before I do that, okay, you can definitely use regular old white or yellow glue to do this glue up, and that's definitely what I recommend the first times you're going to try this. But this Unibon 800 is fantastic for veneer work for a variety of reasons. One, it doesn't contain water. Water-based glues like white and yellow glue, when you put veneer on it, it immediately starts curling up which is just sort of a pain and sometimes it can lead to some shifting of the veneers and you can get some seams that don't sit down right. Um, also it reduces the need for a backer veneer. Um, one of the things with veneering is after you veneer uh, the panel can curl again due to this water that makes the veneer expand bef before it's uh, set down. Um, without the water there the, the the curling tendency of the panel after it's dried is greatly reduced um, and although it doesn't contain water it cleans up easily with water um, it also has a very long working time you have over an hour um, which you don't really need that long for veneer work but it is nice you have time to get the veneer exactly where you want it you're not in any rush at all and I actually use this glue a lot for um, other work that I do, like when I have a complex glue up, I use this for that exact reason that it has such a nice long working time. Um, it also has an extremely rigid glue line, which is pretty important uh, for veneer work. Um, veneers um, with regular glues like white glue, yellow glue, can shift a little bit over time, can, which can reveal some seams. But this glue is extremely rigid and doesn't allow that shifting. Um, on a negative standpoint, um, you do need to heat it to get it to set reasonably rapidly, as we'll see. And then it is somewhat toxic, certainly more toxic than regular um, glues. Um, so you do want to wear a mask, but it's, once it's dried, it's not toxic anymore. Okay, now we're going to weigh out the Unibond. Now it is actually, it's a two-part glue. There's a liquid resin and a powdered catalyst that you mix up. And if you don't have a little digital scale like this in your, in your workshop, I really recommend getting one. They're like $15 on Amazon. I use mine a lot. So it's perfect. It's so much easier to weigh something like this than to try to do it by volume. So it's really easy. I weigh out, and this is a, a, a 1 to 10 ratio liquid resin and then the catalyst that I'll weigh out. That's a powder. And so here's the powder I'm weighing out. And I'm just using little Dixie cups here. Works, works perfect for, for mixing up small quantities. And, and, and then finally you mix them two together. You just pour the powder in, you mix it for about a minute or so with a popsicle stick and you're ready to go. Okay, now we're gonna apply the glue. Now one thing I didn't mention is I weigh out the glue based on the square foot. It's 20 to 25 grams per square foot. That's another nice thing about weighing it is, is you get a very consistent amount. But that's the amount I found is the right amount. Put it on there, roll it out with a good roller, good, good and even. Make sure you get it everywhere. Um, and for I actually use a little more glue for marquetry than I do for regular veneer work. Um, and it gives you that excess that will fill those little tiny gaps. It's really helpful to have those gaps filled. And again, keep the tape pointed up when we put it down. I'm going to set it down and then I'm just going to tape it with some little bit of tape. You don't want to shift it around when I slide into this bag. So a little bit of tape on each side to hold it in place. And again, i got plenty of time here, all the time in the world to do this. So I'm not rushing around like crazy. Okay, now I'm going to slide them into the vacuum bag. And I slide them underneath that breather mesh. Um, and I'm going to put four of them in here is what we're doing. And then we seal up the bag with a little, basically like a Ziploc. And then we take the hose from our vacuum pump, which I'll show you in a minute, and we turn on the vacuum pump, and it sucks down the bag pretty quickly. And it puts a lot, a lot of pressure, very even pressure on those veneers. And this is going to be sitting there for about an hour and a half. We put an electric blanket on it here. We're, we're shooting for about 90 to 100 degrees because that speeds up that glue. 
Now here is my vacuum pump, as simple as it could possibly be. It's a Venturi. I've got, I've got air pressure coming in from my compressor there, and then that black thing is a Venturi, and then shooting off through that valve is my vacuum. Um, that, and then that hose runs over to the bag, and there's the vacuum gauge. You can see already I've got very good vacuum here. And that's all there is to it. No moving parts, very cheap and simple. Just need a compressor to run it. Okay, here's another little advertisement for my California Air Tools compressor. Very, very quiet. No big deal. This thing can be running and it doesn't bother me at all compared to other compressors. It's amazing. And this is a small one, only about two and a half CFM, which is all I need to work on that vacuum pump. Okay, and I think as I mentioned, we're going to hold it for about 90 to 100 degrees Fahrenheit which is 35 to 40 degrees centigrade for about an hour and a half. And here I usually throw a little thermometer in there just to make sure it's, it's coming up to temperature. And this is just a cheap electric blanket that I bought for 40 bucks from Walmart. Okay, now I've been spending a lot of time talking about this fancy glue and this fancy vacuum bag, but I want to reiterate, you do not need to do that, especially for a beginner. Those have a big advantage, particularly when you're doing more complex things, larger things. But you can use good old Elmer's glue that's going to work fine and then instead of the vacuum bag you can just use clamps and here's how I would do this just the way I used to do it before I had a vacuum bag on the bottom there I have two pieces of three quarter inch OSB stacked together and then I got my my uh, my coasters there that I put a piece of uh, um, wax paper over to prevent glue from sticking and then I threw a little bit of newspaper there and that just helps to spread out the force evenly. If things aren't perfectly flat, um, you want to have something that distributes the, the clamping force more evenly and that, that newspaper will serve that purpose because it's a little bit squishable. And then you just throw a bunch of clamps on. Um, I'm putting on four here. I'd probably actually you know, put on as many as you can. You just crank them down good and hard. Having that three quarter inch, you know, I've got two pieces of three quarter inch OSB on both sides and that really helps distribute that force evenly. It's important to get a good even force and that's what's so wonderful about the vacuum bag that does that for you but this will work just fine and it's the way to start and now we're done with the vacuum press and we're going to remove the things from the bag and we'll pull them out and remove the tape um, to see what we have Okay, and now that we're going to remove that tape uh, to see what we have. It's always kind of exciting to see, did it work? Um, and again, as before, you want to pull the veneer reasonably gently. This is sped up video here, so it looks like I'm pulling a little faster. But, and pull across the grain. Again, most veneers are fine, but certain ones will be a little bit sensitive. Okay, the next step is to sand. Uh, when you pull these out of the, the bag, they're going to look kind of ugly, a fair amount of glue on the surface. We need to sand that off. I usually start with 150 grit here, um, and you want to be gentle, reasonably, um, but you can see I'm doing, it for, I'm doing it for a total of three minutes here. I would recommend doing a little bit of practice with veneer to get a sense of what you can do, but I'm doing 150 grit for, for about three minutes um, to remove all of that glue. And then I finish up with a pretty quick pass with 220 grit. Okay, now after we've finished sanding, we want to inspect the picture very closely. Usually I use magnifying goggles here. And you want to look, are there any gaps that aren't filled? 90% of the time the glue is going to fill them pretty well. But sometimes there's little spaces that aren't quite filled. What I found to work best is just a little bit of glue and sawdust. So I'm spreading on a little bit of white glue here in the little tiny spots that, that, that aren't completely filled. And then I come back with just hand sandpaper, and here I'm using 150 grit, I believe, um, and just sand circular, just generating some sawdust and filling those little cracks in. And this works really quite well. Um, after you've done this, um, the picture's going to look great. Okay, now we're going to trim to final size. As I mentioned, we started with our, our, our substrate wood about a half inch oversize, or yeah, half inch oversize. And I'm trimming that down on the table saw, that's all. 
clean up the edges. Okay, now we're going to route and sand the edges. Um, we talked about we we use solid wood here, and the idea w was that we would expose that wood on the on the underside. And so that's what I'm doing here, is I'm routing each of the edges, and that's going to give a nice uh, border of this mahogany wood around our veneer. Okay, now this is a close up showing the edge that I've routed, just using a standard roundover bit. But I just wanted to show that I've got the bit. Um, adjusted to cut deep enough so that I get that top, that little vertical ledge at the very top, which is only about a sixteenth inch deep or so. But that's important to give you a nice sharp definition to the edge of the veneer. And then uh, I just have to sand it. Now if you don't have these little contoured rubber pads like I have here, I would get some. They're great for sanding stuff like this so much, so much better than just trying to do it by hand. It really, really does a great job getting that rounded edge and getting those little bit of burn marks off. Okay, now we're going to begin finishing and I'm going to first seal with shellac. Um, I'm doing that um, to seal the wood and then more importantly to bring out the color of the wood prior to the next step that I'm going to do which is uh, apply a bit of a grain filler. Okay, the next step here I'm going to apply a bit of a grain filler. Now this is definitely optional, but uh, what I'm going to use here is a product that I really like. It's called Aqua Coat, and it is a totally clear grain filler. It's kind of like a gel-like material, and you just simply take a putty knife, very easy to just spread it around. I usually go with the grain, followed by across the grain, and put it in with a putty knife, and then let it dry an hour or two, and sand it off. And usually it does take a coat or two. Now again this is just filling up little tiny cracks if you really want that perfect finish um, this gets you there but you can definitely skip it. Okay in the final step I'm going to finish it with a spray polyurethane. If you wanted to you could have skipped the shellac, you could have skipped the grain filler and just do this of course. What you can see here is I'm using a turntable. If you don't have a turntable, boy, they are terrific for any kind of spray finishing. Also note there's a box filter or a box fan with a filter on it, um, and that really grabs the, uh, the excess spray, keep it from floating around the room. And now you're done, so sit back, uh, have a drink, and enjoy.